Dear Earthmates, we are visiting Terry Davies. Um, he is <clears throat> an internationally renowned uh, composer and orchestra conductor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, uh, thank you so much for accepting this <clears throat> interview. I'm sorry. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, uh, I was fascinated by your music when I watched uh, The Birds at uh, Istanbul City Theater years ago. Yes, a long time ago. <laughs> yes, yes. And, um, uh, and you write music, compose music for theater, uh, films, uh, television. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, how did your love uh, for music begin? Um, I don't know how it started, really. I don't come from a musical family. Uh, my family were always were always very supportive, but uh, they they weren't musicians. They were they they were. My parents were very. Uh, diligent and looked after and they just followed the advice of teachers so I, I had uh, I just always loved loved music and it was the one thing I could do you know I could I could I was okay at most other activities but at music I it was just the one thing that I could do that other people around me couldn't and uh, so like all children <laughs> I focused on that um, and um, and I had very um clever teachers in a very ordinary school I had I was very lucky to have one or two particularly um, aware teachers who encouraged uh, my parents and um, and um, so just it was always I never deviated actually uh, it was always the, the the one thing that I was that I came back to it never occurred to me to do much much else really And uh, uh, what do you think about uh, AI? It's uh, one of the famous, uh, uh, one of the topics in our lives. Uh, yeah. what, what use does it have? Does it have any use uh, in music? I think it depends from which uh, side of the street you're, you're standing. You know, if it, if I if, if are we talking about art and music and uh, specifically, yeah. um, well, the use I guess is for the um, in a commercial world uh, the the where where music in the in which music is used commercially, like in uh, in television and so on. I can see that from a producer's point of view I think AI is I can see that there's every possibility that it can write serviceable music that would that would fulfill a, a brief if you like for a, for a, and and I therefore I assume that that will become increasingly common and presumably starting with the cheaper end of the production and then as AI improves who knows I, I certainly don't how far it can go but I um i would hope no i, I don't know <laughs> i it is my hope that you know that little bit when you get really get to the quality end of the spectrum where you know it's in film and television you're writing very fast quite often and um the best the best film music is terrific music uh, and that, that's um that's uh, that's just a, a fact really um but quite a lot of music is 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 serviceable um and perfectly fine and pleasant to listen to and i can imagine and because it's written very fast uh, and um uh, and there are orchestrators and so on who who make that process even faster um and take the pressure off a composer who has a very tight deadline um but i i can see that a, that a computer might be able to uh accept, you know, to, to produce music equally equally successfully to that brief 
Um, however, I would hope that uh, at the real high end of things, where there's a soul at play, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> uh, well, not to say that you no know, film composers don't have a soul, because and, I mean I write film music and I can touch a lot of film music, and some of it is great and it has a lot of soul, but there's there is a certain amount that doesn't and um, or that can't. Um, and I would hope that 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 little bit of end of the spectrum it, for writers of any genre, any any art, I would hope that thing that you know might you know optimistically head towards genius, if you like, would would never ever <laughs> be computable. I hope. I agree with you. Yes. Uh, by the way, um, I think you are also an actor, actually. Uh no, no, not really. No, but I in your I mind have, because I have done, uh, yeah, because you write for theater, yes, films, and yes. no, that means you analyze yes. characters, situations. I do like dramaturg, yes. a director in a way. And I you do. Also act. I so, do. I do have a thing. I have a, one of my collaborators, regular collaborators, is a very successful choreographer here called Sir Matthew Bourne. Uh, he's he's a very uh, in the UK he's our biggest choreographer really, uh, and he tells very his brilliance is he's a he can tell very subtle and complicated uh, psychological stories in dance without using words. And he does it with it's it's a remarkable thing. Um, I hope one day we can get to Istanbul. I think he may have actually been been to Istanbul before I started working with him, perhaps with his Swan Lake, a long, long, long time ago. Um, but um, he he says to me, we had an we had a joint interview together recently, and he was saying that it hadn't occurred to me before. And he and I and somebody had asked why we why we collaborated so successfully for such a long time, and um, his answer was, which surprised me a bit, and then I thought, oh, no, okay, that's fair. He he said, I think it's because you tell stories, and so do I. So, uh, and so I think that's probably where we, where we, where it comes from. And I hadn't thought in those terms, but I, I think that probably is true. And also as a young uh, composer and musician, uh, performing musician and orchestrator as well, uh, when I was in my mid twenties, I started um, working in theatre. Somebody came and asked me to do a musical and um, to orchestrate actually a musical, uh, and I was the music director of that. Became the music director of that as well, um, and then I went on. So I did a lot. Of, I did within t short space of time. I did a lot of theatre, and mi mu musical theatre, I should say, really more than anything, and then because and then i worked at the national theater they did a production of uh guys and dolls which i co-orchestrated and that was a very 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 successful production you and, won an uh, award uh, it it won many awards i was a co-orchestrator so i didn't <laughs> there are no orchestration awards <laughs> for theater but um <laughs> and but it was a remarkable it was a remarkable show with 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 a and it had a big impact. It was the first musical at the National Theatre, actually. And um, so, and then as a result, for the next 12 years or so, I, as a freelance, I worked very regularly at the National Theatre um, doing plays as well as musicals. I had more and more plays than musicals. And so I, I got to work with very, very fine actors and very fine directors. And I learned an enormous amount um, that has been very useful over the years. So I would say that, so very often if I'm doing film or other things, um, that in, I, 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 I'm, I feel completely at home with actors. I like actors <laughs> and um, I like telling stories as Matthew says. And uh, by the way, uh, I enjoy doing interviews uh, audiovisually because you know only 10% of the communication is with words, 30% yes. voice and 60% uh, body language, etc. Yeah. So uh, uh, these uh, uh, interviews will hopefully uh, add to 
world culture. And uh, by the way, here's a crazy question. Do you listen to music? <laughs> well, do you know, actually, it's, that's, a, that's a very good question, actually. I, I don't listen to much music, if, but I don't half listen to music. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, if I want to, if I listen, I listen, and uh, so I, um, and I find it very distracting if I don't want to listen to music and there's music going on and something, and I, you know, if we, if you and I were having this conversation and somebody was playing uh, a radio in the next room, I would find that quite distracting. So, so, uh, so, um, I'm not, a, I'm not a great fan of music in lifts and, um, and. Uh, in shops and everywhere else when you're, I find it actually a little bit abusive, actually. I don't know if that's putting it too strongly. I find it quite abusive because if I don't, that's, uh, music tells you how to feel, that's what it does. And if you if if you don't feel, it insists that you feel, especially if the, the better the music is, the more it insists. And so, well, actually that's not entirely true. No, there's bad music that's also insistent, but you, it, it's, if I'm, if I'm having a bad day, if I've just, if my father has just died and somebody's playing cheery music, I think that's abusive <laughs> and I don't want to feel that. And, uh, and and I don't think it's, you know, and if you go into a shop, they're trying to sell things and they'll try and make your heart pump a little faster, which it does, music does all those things. That, if you, that's not what you feel. I I, I know I'm being a, a bit of an, you know, an old, <laughs> silly old fart, but actually I don't, I don't really, um, I don't particularly like it. Mm -hmm. Because, <clears throat> uh, for example, I have a problem with words, with reading, especially when I read uh, a book in Turkish. I can't help changing things, etc. It's a, prof what's the word? Uh, professional, uh, the, has professional hazard, or what is it? There is a term for it. Anyway, um, so it's for me reading is not easy. Uh, or you, you feel that you could express something differently or should express. Yes, yes. I am not an innocent reader. I, I wish I some I've been longing to go back to my uh, childhood when I wasn't writing, and I cannot imagine how I would read today if I were not a writer. I I don't know. You know, I'm not an innocent reader. That's what I'm saying. I so, uh, he, trying to put myself into your shoes, and uh, yeah, sounds sounds uh, attacking. Yeah, they can yeah, be, and you don't want, especially. Yeah, they yes, and it's it's uh, yeah, but it's been going on for decades, you know. And so I'm, yes. I there's no point. I'm just complaining because I'm. You know, I, because you've asked me, <laughs> but I do. I, you know, I, I actually just uh, I find it uh, I find it a bit disruptive, and uh, and I think one should be allowed to feel what one feels, and music changes how you feel. Exactly, exactly. And uh, how about conducting? Uh, uh, did it grow uh, naturally out of your? Being a, a composer, I mean, uh, it, I, 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 it interested me at university, uh, so I did some conducting at university, and then in the theatre work, uh, I was very often uh, conducting or sometimes leading from a from a piano or a keyboard or, or something. So I was used to doing that earlier on, and then later when I really when I started. To, well, I know I did a fair amount of that, I suppose, but but really, it really started to uh, be more involving when I started doing film, uh, conducting film sessions, um, and um, because I was working for other composers, um, so I think because I'm a composer, I, I kind of I've always got on well with other composers. Um, I I don't see myself in competition or anything. I, that we, I, I'm there to help them and to make do the best job. For a film, so I so for quite a few composers, I, I, I was conducting for film, um, which I really enjoy, and of course, your your film, your your musicians for film are very very fine, um, 
and um, so it's it's an intensely pleasurable if uh, if uh, if intense in every single sense <laughs> you know so it can be quite uh, the adrenaline is flying let's say because you have to do an awful lot uh, in a very short space of time because uh, musicians are expensive big orchestras are very expensive and um so somebody somewhere is counting how much it's costing and so yeah there's all of that is is going on in the background you have to handle all of that and not convey that to the musicians who simply want to play the music as well as they can so i i i actually very very much enjoy that and because i'm a performing musician i, I am I have been a player i have been a composer so that i feel completely at home with that and i i love it actually Makes me very happy. Wonderful. And uh, um, meeting you personally, um, uh, I, w I wish we both wish, I'm sure, that uh, the, the, uh, res the reason uh, had been something else. But we both lost a dear friend uh, in a terror attack. Mm -hmm. uh, in Istanbul and uh, in 2005, uh, no, 2004 it was. And then uh, for the anniversary um, uh, of uh, Kerem Yilmazar, uh, the wonderful actor and a gentleman, right? Uh, nice. He was he was the, uh, the leading actor in The Birds of Aristophanes, I recall, and <clears throat> and then uh, we, um, I w wanted to write lyrics, and you kindly uh, composed it. Uh, it's uh, uh, not because I wrote the li lyrics, but it's uh, it's a beautiful song, and um, a, a lament is that. Uh, Yes, yes, that, that yes, that covers it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and uh, in Turkish and in English, and uh, uh, I hope uh, more people will become aware of that, uh, and because it is against terror for peace, and uh, unfortunately, the world still needs. Uh, uh struggle uh, yeah more or less yeah more or less. Uh, would you like to uh share an anecdote uh about Kerem Yilmazer for example or the the birds the when you were doing uh, it uh well I mean I after I think the birds ran for uh, ran at Shahid Yatrasu for about four years, I think, yes. or something like that. And uh, uh, um, so uh, I got to know Kerem and Gökso uh, Kortai quite well in that time, and uh, they became very good friends. Gökso is still a very good friend. And um, so, I, in fact, I saw her. I left her yesterday morning <laughs> in Nizmir. So, so, uh, so I saw her yesterday. Uh, oh, although I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in England now, but uh, yes, I saw her yesterday. Uh, we oh. we were both in Ismail. Oh. Um, but so, so I mean, so after the after Kushlag closed, I um, uh, I stayed good friends, and we saw them very often, both here and in uh, here in England and in Turkey. So uh, so Kerem and uh, I just remember this is a very very sweet gentle soul and he was completely un unruffleable if that's if that's a word that's probably not a word he could not be ruffled <laughs> um and um Sorry, i didn't catch the he, word well it, i i was suggesting a new word of unruffleable <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he would refuse he would not he was always very very calm whatever else was going on except on one occasion i remember we were trying to get to it sticks in my mind because it was so unique. Uh, we were trying to catch a ferry somewhere. Uh, which area was it? 
I can't remember where we were, but we were further south. We were on the coast further south, and uh, and we were late. We were late trying to catch a ferry, and there was a car in front of us, actually full of full of um, uh, English <laughs> English uh, people, actually, and they were and he they were driving and not taking much attention, and he he was hooting at them, and they were in a narrow street, and so the more he hooted, the slower they went. And and I think they thought it was very funny. There's this sort of you know this slightly agitated person and uh, uh, who needed to get by. And in the end, so so we finally stopped at some obstruction in the road. And Karen, to my astonishment, got out of the car. And his English was perfect. Uh, and remonstrated very very firmly and loudly. And he was so angry. So rather than rather than hurry to the ferry, it was more important to him at that moment to tell these people what he thought about them. And I thought it was fantastic in impeccable English. It was great. So that sticks in my mind because otherwise he was that was the only time I ever saw him ruffled by anything. He was wow. a lovely, lovely, sweet man. I was very fond of him. Yes, yes. And um uh, um did it happen, uh, I mean, accepting uh, a project um, and then regretting that you have you accepted it and then oh. changing mind? Did it ever happen? Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Has it not happened to you? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we all do, don't we? I some yes. The, the, occasionally, not that often and increasingly less often but when uh like most writers it's it's very hard to earn a living when you're young and um uh and so you take you know, most offers you know, <laughs> if not every offer to just to turn because you have to eat and so um so yes there were some projects and increasingly as time goes on, you you learn to weed them out, and also people, some people are, are trouble, and others are not. Um, so I, yeah, that it does happen. It does happen, uh, but usually it's it's usually uh, it, um, it's usually through a, a bad collaborator that I that I I've, I've had most trouble. But I don't get nowadays. I I don't. I just only work with people that I, mm -hmm. I I know and that I like, or or that I feel I'm likely to have something to say with. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what should parents or teachers do regarding music education? I mean, I'm sure there's music education in UK, um, uh, in schools, but uh, in the world, it's not so, maybe, I don't know. I mean, uh, well, it happens that we have we have a little bit of a crisis here, actually, uh, because we have a government that is, doesn't value the arts and um, and and uh, the, the, the actually schools are teaching much less music. So there are many fewer musicians coming through uh, than there were when I was growing up. So um, in my school, I went to a very ordinary school, state school. It was nothing special. I just had a very good music teacher as it happens. Um, but the, the, I, there were instruments in the school and um, I could have lessons and um, I didn't have to pay for those. These days, uh, you, there are no instruments in the in the schools, and uh, you have to pay for everything. And so, um, so what's happened now is that the, in this country, increasingly and uh, and it's controversially now, that really the truth is that most musicians, most actors, uh, which is the that's the areas that I know most about, are from are from families with a lot with money and um uh and so uh unfortunately that you there's not the breadth of experience uh so i suspect there are a lot of fine musicians that will we will never know 
because they're not haven't got enough money in their family. That is that is sad. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's an increasing problem here, and and we at this moment is we're, we're very depressed about it. Uh, and by the way, um, when I said UK, um, uh, do you think um, UR is possible, United Republic, or <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm all in favor of that. I can, <laughs> I can remember. Yes, I, I no. I think the answer is no. <laughs> but I have to say, unfortunately, really, I, I, I don't have any particular problem with individual people. I think uh, the, the, the no. queen, the queen who died recently, I think was a remarkable person. Um, but since I was. I can remember being in a class at school and I think I was 12 and it was the first time I was aware of this because I was a very a well-behaved boy and um I there was a they decided to have a debate class debates and you know so people which was a new concept and the first one of those was about the monarchy and um and I think in a class of 30 people or something I was the only one at 12 to my astonishment I, who thought that the monarchy was a bad idea and 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 so i i had all of my colleagues and my teacher trying to you know sort of gunning for me um be, for this extreme viewpoint that uh, we should be a republic uh, um but it stays in my mind because that was the first time i ever stood up and said no hang on this is me you know and i i and uh, it was a big moment so actually and i've never changed my mind <laughs> Great. Uh, the thing is, no matter how democratic a regime is considered, the idea of a monarchy, you know, one family, yeah, uh, I mean, it is anti-democratic. Yeah. It, it, it is. It, it is. I mean, the the uh, the argument goes here that um, that they don't have any real power. They're a head of state yeah. rather than a head of government. Um, I, but they absorb a lot of money and actually they do um, i suppose on the other side they they give a kind of brand to the uk and uh, for tourism and so on tourism. but um they um but actually in their constitution at 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 its core if in a, in an extreme crisis the uh, the monarch can take control or has 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 has, has real power and um, it, it's it's not been the case for many yeah you know, for a very very long time but but no it's there and um you know people like not don't like to talk about that um but um yes it's 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 not a it's a constitutional monarchy it's not a it's it's not a uh, it's, it's not a governing monarchy true um and uh uh, what would you uh, suggest to young earthmates? We still have time, uh, but I want to ask that question, as I mentioned before. Um, well, I, d I don't know about you, Tarek, because we haven't talked about this, but I, uh, I, I the, the, t the tide of it's probably not got to this extreme yet, but the the I the tide of extreme right wing politics is is flowing fast and confidently, and um, and I think we uh, and that's into that's everywhere, as far as I can see. Uh, I don't know if you feel that, but that's the yeah, way it seems. Definitely. And, uh, so uh, so those of us who don't think that's a good thing need to do our best to reach out to each other. And um, and to try and counteract that by um, by uh, mutual you know encourage, encouraging mutual understanding. I, I think these kind of extremisms are can thrive, especially in the day in these days of uh, new media. Of, of I can thrive um, on ignorance and uh, lack of. Lack of mutual understanding, really. I think was so. So, if you don't know, 
if you don't know somebody from a different culture, it's easy to be a racist. It's much harder if you if you have met all the people around you who know who who and whose experiences might be different. And you, you know, people are good. People are most you know broadly human beings are good. And uh, and there's something to be enjoyed. There's friendships to be had right across all communities. And so I think we need to break down. Uh, we as artists, I think, with the best we can do, and it's a small thing, but it's all we can do, uh, is to is to reach out and touch and 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 communicate with each other and try and enlighten really. And when the, when the forces of darkness are gathering, that's the way it feels. I'm, that feels really depressing, but uh, that is that's the way it feels to me. And as artists, I think we have a duty. I really do, actually. I agree completely. Uh, when I was 19, um, the leading humorist author in Turkey, short... A hu humanist. A humorist. A humorist, ah, pardon. Yeah, yeah also okay. humanist. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Socialist. Uh, Aziz Nesin, uh, his name. Uh, I asked him, how are you? And he said, I I've got to be well. <laughs> At that time, I didn't understand because as a young poet, uh, I was happy with my crises, etc. You know, mm -hmm. eating me to poems, etc. But and when I came to his age, I understood. Yes, we do not have the luxury of being pessimistic or l losing yeah. being. I agree. No, I absolutely, agree. Uh, I absolutely no. agree. Yeah, I completely agree, Terry. And uh, in a way, um, I try to see even the bad guys um, as victims. I mean, um, they don't know uh, the the um, one of the famous last words, uh, of course, is uh, attributed to Jesus on the cross, and when he said, uh, "Forgive them, Father; they do not know what they are doing." Something like that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's right. Yeah, that is wisdom. Yes. Uh, so, how can we uh, influence, enlighten, help while we learn? You know, how come they break musical instruments in in Afghanistan now? The Taliban, you know, break them because they were made by Satan. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah. The, yes. We can do better, I'm sure, and. And uh, anything else you would like to add, or ask yourself? No, no, I'm no, I no, so I'm just, I'm just thinking about what you've, what you've been saying. I mean, no, that's, that's, um, it's, it's just so important that we try to do that. You know, um, you know, strangely enough, I was, um, the, I think the optimism thing is very, very important. I, I, um, I was um, involved in a performance recently of. Just before I came to, to Turkey last week, I I, uh, I did a performance of um, a piece by a composer here called Rafe Vaughan Williams, who a uh, concert composer, um, English concert composer, um, and he was writing a piece in 1937, um, and it was a it and he had been uh, involved in the First World War here as a uh, as an ambulance driver on in the in the, around the trenches. Um, so he had experienced uh, war at its worst, and um, he wrote he wrote this piece, and it is a literal yearning plea for peace in a in a uh, in a world that felt he was losing control of, and and you know it it's a very very wonderful beautiful thing, and if nothing else, it's a document, it's a record of a certain feeling and and the way that things were at that particular dark time and it just it was just on my mind it feels very dark this conversation Tarek, i'm sorry but it's we are embracing life in this story yeah, okay. okay well i was just thinking afterwards i was just thinking of all the beauty and we finished the performance and i thought oh actually you know what terry this is because it was good it's good music and um you know didn't it was wasted you know 
at just the moment, I thought, what a waste. You know, he, did, he tried, he did his best. He wrote this beautiful thing and he to say, please, let's have peace. Now, you know, in 1937. And um, uh, I, it just, <laughs> so there was, a, I had a bleak few moments and I just thought, what is the point? And then, but actually you, you have to do exactly as you say. You have to do what Vaughan Williams did really. You have to say, we can do better. And, and this, is not, this is not what everybody says. And um, not what everybody feels. Thank you so much. Okay. You, you, okay. Sorry, we ended on that very dark note. Wonderful. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, uh, joy of living. Joy. Yeah, yeah. In Absolutely. spite of all and humor. Joy. These are uh, social, socialistic in a way, in a good uh, yeah. sense. Yeah. Some people misunderstand that, yeah. too, but. Uh, and uh, yeah. well, we we have to we have to reach out, as you say. We have to yeah. be positive. We have to be positive and say, what can we do? Maybe just a small amount. What can we do? Uh, yeah, exactly. We are together. This is what I enjoy saying. Yeah. At the okay. end of the okay. conversation, Good. we are together. Thank okay. you so much. That's all right, Tarek. Nice to talk to you. Okay. We are together. You take care. <laughs>